Welcome to the Weed Show. We are back. It's been a couple of weeks since we've done one of these. Of course, still brought to you by Race Tech. Support the sport. Sounds like a lot of people are actually doing that right now. A lot of dealerships and parts suppliers have told me that more people than ever are buying stuff, including motorcycles and gear and parts. Finally, time to go riding because I think you can fit riding into social distancing. I know I can. Jason Wygan here at Racer X uh, going riding today. That's my guy Lane. Uh, our bikes are here in this little uh, area we got to ride in the woods. Uh, we're not getting close to anybody else, but I've got more time on my hands without any races on weekends, so why not get some riding time in? Uh, and hopefully you're doing that too, or if not, that's fine. Everyone has their decision on if it's safe to ride or not right now. But there is light at the end of the tunnel if all you want to see is professional racing to return on weekends. Now, the last time I did one of these shows, we were in the absolute depths of doom and gloom, not just because of the coronavirus news was obviously not good, but because there wasn't enough news. We didn't know, was this gonna go on for months? How many people were gonna die, literally? What kind of impact would this have on the economy? Uncertainty was the absolute worst part. We knew the news would be bad. But we just didn't know, was it falling off a cliff level? Was it falling down stairs level? Or was it just, uh, I think so at one point they called it a V-shaped recovery where you would just go right over it, almost like clearing a double. So for a few weeks, I didn't know how to interpret anything. I'm not a scientist and I'm not a real journalist. I just cover motorcycle races for a living. And what I did not want to do is what a lot of people do, which is just determine that things were going to align themselves exactly with what my worldview is that seems to be what most people do. You just decide the truth is whatever you want it to be, which is not the way it actually works. Sometimes the news isn't what you want to hear and it isn't good. And that doesn't mean people are lying. It just means it's not good. So there's my guy Lane. He's pumped up. Why? Because we got a dirt bike right here. I got my dirt bike right here. And uh, this is our little woods track. Uh, we'll go hang out. You want to ride more? He has a no. He's stuffed his face with goldfish right now. But we can finally see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel and we can finally not just have this full, uh, full, full centered unsurety of what is coming next. Because now, about a month into this, we're starting to see some ideas of opening the country, we're starting to see some flattening of the curve. Uh, maybe the worst is behind us. Now that still leaves the residual damage that we'll have to the country after all this, but I'd rather deal with just the residual damage than worrying about the now and the then now we're maybe just focused on the then. And specifically in the racing industry, there have been some breaks. First of all, earlier this week, there was a group to meet to try to figure out how to get Lucas Oil Pro Motocross to actually happen in June when they had announced. Uh, they're turning over every rock and every stone, like not these ones, this one would be tough. Be really tough to turn that one over. Um, but the smaller rocks and stones, it might not be possible to race this summer and have fans. It might not. And they do need fans at these races. Maybe not as many fans as usual, uh, but there isn't a TV or sponsorship package that allows the racetracks in Pro Motocross to run races without any fans cone, on hand. Cone. A cone. Yeah, they're turning over rock stones and cones. Now, you're going to hear about the NBA and the NFL and Major League Baseball trying to run fanless events. They have massive TV deals. They can afford to do that because TV without fans will still pay for enough of the revenue operating costs. A pro motocross is a little different. So folks behind that series are worked super hard to try to figure out, is it possible to run a race with some form of social distancing? Certainly not today's form, but maybe by the time you get to June and July, the regulations won't be quite as strict. They're not going to be gone, but maybe they can work within Oh, wow. Those guidelines. So they're thinking of everything, both from the athlete's point of view as far as like how could sign up be done without touching anything and the fans point of view as far as how few people you could line up if you had a big field like this. Maybe you just have five people here, five people here, five no. people here and spread them out. They're just trying to put every option on the table. No guarantees it's going to work, but it is encouraging to know that they're at least trying. They're not just sitting back and waiting and hoping that a magic wand gets waved. They're trying to sprinkle some magic dust on their events. So that's encouraging. Will racing return? I sure hope so, but I'm not sure. But it's a whole lot less dire of a situation. I really think a couple of weeks ago, I thought there was no chance. And now there is, you're telling me there's a chance. And then even better news last night, we thought the schedule would end up being if Lucas Oil Pro Motocross comes back, they race June, July-ish through the beginning of September, and then Supercross would slot in after that. It sure seemed like the months of April and May, there was no chance anyone was gonna do any type of racing. I gotta do a video, do Oh, hey, Supercross has been turning over rocks and stones as well. 
You might not pay attention to stick and ball sports, but Major League Baseball came up with this plan of having a whole bunch of games in Arizona. Why Arizona? A lot of teams have spring training down there. So there's a bunch of not quite Major League level, but good baseball fields. And since they're not going to be able to have fans anyway, it doesn't matter if the stands aren't huge. But there would be enough fields to have every major league team all play their games in Arizona and they can quarantine them and they can keep them all in one hotel room, a bubble, as they call it. Which one is going to win? We will rate anything, man. So baseball had this idea. Suddenly, Supercross has a very similar idea. I don't know if this is where the idea came from, but it sounds similar. What if we went to State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona, where we already raced round four of the 2020 championship? and raced a whole bunch of races there. And maybe the climate is now opening back up to maybe race in May and June, which was the original plan. And then that was impossible. And now maybe it is possible. So we have heard there was a meeting with teams Friday night. So this is, uh, I got a couple sources on this. There absolutely was a meeting floating the idea of could we go racing probably like mid-May to mid-June and get all seven rounds of Supercross in. It's not a guarantee it's gonna happen. But I wouldn't think you'd start this exploratory thing if you knew there was absolutely no chance. So there is a chance, a chance, that Supercross not only gets the races in, but gets them in earlier than the fall that they thought they were going to have to wait for. And that's also good because it means Supercross would naturally end before motocross, which is the way it's supposed to go. And I do believe Supercross can run without fans. They're not going to bring in a ton of money, but they'd rather run seven races without fans than no races at all. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how the economics of that work out, but certainly you're saving a whole bunch of money if you just work in one stadium for all seven rounds. You're not uh, flying people in and out and you're not trucking dirt in and out and all that. I don't know how logistics would work as far as the riders. Baseball says the players are gonna go to a hotel and not even move. You're, you're in a hotel or a baseball stadium and nothing else. And we're gonna test every day. Quarantine COVID virus test. You know how Supercross riders are. They like to do a different type of testing. They want to leave uh, the racetrack area and go back to their test tracks and ride. I don't know if that's going to be allowed or not, but let's be honest. When I did a video here a couple of weeks ago, there was one major point that I said that we need to all think about to try to cope with the COVID, and that is it's not going to be perfect this year. Compromises will have to be made. And these riders and these teams and these sponsors and NBC and the promoters, they want to get these Supercross races in. Is it ideal to race like this? It is not. Uh, it would be really bad to be able to race but not be able to go back and ride and uh, train back at home and uh, get in a plane in between races. That's certainly not the typical program for these guys. But it all depends on how desperately you want to get back to work. Are you willing to do it at 70 to 80 percent of what it's normally like as opposed to zero percent? I think the teams want to go racing and I think that they would endorse this plan. Now a lot of things have to happen, certainly the state of Arizona and Glendale, Arizona and the stadium and the hotels and all that have to get on board with this. I don't know if it's going to happen and I don't know if pro motocross is going to happen either. But my point is, we look a whole lot better, at least there's a plan, at least there is light at the end of the tunnel. I can see it. I don't know if we're going to reach it. I don't know if the light's going to be turned off. Maybe they'll say uh, the tunnel is closed until 2021, it's possible. But it's a whole lot more encouraging. In fact, you could just you could just get a chart right now. Get a chart right now. Type in Dow Jones Industrial Average. There's some more rocks and stones that we're turning over and racing with two-stroke sounds. Get a chart. Dow Jones Industrial Average over say the last six weeks, and you'll see it go like this, and then come back up. We now see some semblance of normalcy coming back. It's the new normal, but it's a whole lot more normal than just being locked in our houses and not being allowed to work, or in this case, race. So that's all encouraging. It's starting to edge back up, just like that Dow Jones Industrial Average. It's almost like the perfect graphic to describe our collective conscience through all of this. Now remember, not all the news is gonna be good and it's not all gonna align with your personal worldviews. But there is one thing that every American can agree on. The closer we can get to normal, the better we will all feel. We have to manage that, of course, with health and safety. So we have to respect how easily coronavirus does transfer. And yes, the fact that people really do die from it. We have to respect that. How well can they balance these two things? At least the conversation has turned to how can we do it as opposed to no, 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 we can't do it. Which is, I think, the way everybody felt just a few weeks ago. Man, when we get back to racing, like I said, even if it's a compromise, even if it's not perfect, it's going to feel so good to have even some semblance of the new sense of normal. 
But in the meantime, I found some silver lining. Shh, don't tell everyone. I love going to races on weekend, on weekends, but I have enjoyed spending some weekends at home, going riding with my group. Don't tell anybody that I've enjoyed some of it. Now get back to your fun life on weekends where you've got uh, less to worry about internally and more to worry about externally. Try to make the most of it for as long as we're locked up in our houses. We might as well try to enjoy it. Good? See you next time.